Van Olst, uh, so from his point of view, it looked like you kind of dumped him. Um, I didn't, certainly didn't think I dumped him. I didn't, I didn't mean to get into him by any means. Um, if anything, I think he was, looked like he was already pretty loose, but I just misjudged his speed difference. Um, you know, I was in a hurry to get back to the front. The fact that he's been so important, especially on those starts. Once they kind of get away from you, it's really hard to run them back down. So, kind of, you know, it's in a rush to go and, and just jumping in there and then didn't really realize how much he was going to check up. So I really hate it for those guys. Definitely didn't deserve to be wrecked and it wasn't anything intentional. You pushed them uh, at Daytona for the one and everything. So uh, now that you have this sort of strike between you guys, he said, he told me earlier he want, he's going to have a conversation with you and stuff. So uh, where do you see that going and uh, what do you think is going to come out of this? I'm not sure. I mean, I don't think it'll be you know, hopefully anything major. I'm definitely happy to go talk to him and yeah. go see him, talk it through, um, you know, get his side. And, and so he can hear my side. I think that's you know, the best way to handle things. Your car seemed pretty loose out there, especially when running with uh, Gus Dean. What, what was going on with your car? Yeah, we were pretty loose all race. Um, I feel like it was fairly manageable for the most part, but it definitely was exaggerated in dirty air. Um, but I feel like even with that, it, we were still had the best car at times, and, and I feel like we could have got back to the front. It just was, it was tough to get around them, and every time we'd, we'd get there, we'd catch a lapper at the wrong, wrong time and have to kind of reset. So that was pretty frustrating. Um, but definitely feel like we made gains from Kansas. At Kansas, we were about that loose, but, you know, but couldn't really drive through it. Today, I feel like we had the group to still be able to kind of manage it. And, uh, so I think that's a good, good change. I uh, appreciate the guys working hard in the off weeks, and hopefully we'll be, uh, have a shot of getting the win. Uh, what is your uh, take on the etiquette out there? A lot of drivers, especially in the series, or drivers who come down to race, you know, they talk about etiquette out there, no respect, driving through people. What is your take on that, especially being in the incident tonight? Yeah, I mean, I feel like the leaders race really hard in the series, you know, top five to eight guys, and uh, I think that's just good hard racing, and, and uh, you know, those guys haven't really seemed to wreck each other or anything. Uh, it's just been hard racing. And it's more, it just gets frustrating with some of the lap cars, just how off the pace they are, and, and being on a just makes it hard to race too wide for a long time. Um, you end up having to let somebody go or, or check out big time. So that's more of the frustrating part about about running these cars. But um, overall, it's I think the racing up front is hard and it's good. From the outside, the restarts obviously seem crazy with the great lane differential. How did it seem from behind the wheel? Yeah, I was uh, I was pretty surprised when we that you know first restart when we started on the outside how little trip there was on the outside. Obviously, spun the tires pretty bad. We got to the lead and was on the bottom. I thought we'd be in good shape, but I really just couldn't go anywhere. You know, Tony got a good run, and I even had a good push, which normally helps you, you know, hook the tires up. So, uh, still don't know really why we struggle with that so much, but um, yeah, it was pretty frustrating. Too. This is Brayton Laster. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Check out one of the awesome videos right beside me, and go to frontstretch.com for more awesome racing-related content.